Oh, and uh, shift gears, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to have the flexibility. You got to have the dexterity, uh, and then you've got to have the t- testicular fortitude to say, "We're going to lose this game with the ball in my hand." Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, even when we think about leadership at the highest levels, and I'm going to say that I'm going to say this I'm going to say this delicately uh, and politically correct. If you think, as you think about leadership at the highest levels of our land, um, you see people um, being afraid to put their cause ahead of their personal gain, and that's and that's what we're seeing. It's like I've got I've got a personal sacrifice that would come into play if I do what's best for the organization. Yeah. And they're unwilling to do that. They are afraid uh, of the personal downfall. If they do what's best for the organization, the country, the region, whatever the case is. And that's just weak leadership. I wouldn't even call that leadership Mm. because leadership requires courage. It, it requires a ton of courage. I wanted to, to go back to something you said about calling audibles. And then I think we often view audibles as a viable solution when it's not. Because if you are constantly calling audibles, then members of the system don't know how to function within an audible because things are constantly changing. And within audibles, it doesn't always result in some sort of known process to an outcome. And Audible is intended to shift gears and throw things off for the defense that's coming at you or trying to prevent you from moving forward. And it's intended to shake up business as usual so that you can be creative in a moment. That can give you the spark or the burst you need to get to a desired in goal or location. And I think leaders can wing it way too much, way too often, which addresses what you're talking about a bit, and not appreciate the process. The process yes. is intended to protect everyone involved that is on your side of the, of the, of the ball. And when you don't allow them to function within a known process that they've prepared for that they've contributed to or participated in you're put you putting them at risk while they may be playing offense right now they may wrong run to the wrong location they may run the wrong route they may sign the wrong contract they may speak to the wrong partner they may interact with the wrong customer they may sell the wrong thing and all because you cause and called an audible and it creates confusion yeah, I, I think I think yeah. not only do I agree with everything that you just said, uh, there there is uh, one word that you said kind of in passing that I think has a lot more significance than uh, our viewers may give it. Uh, when you're talking about audibles, you said um, there's a problem with constantly calling audibles. <laughs> and I think the word constantly is the key there, because if you're constantly calling audibles, that means that you don't have a game plan. It's true. Right. You don't have a process if you're constantly calling audibles uh, for every for every reason that you just described. Uh, at the same time, you know, one of the things that an audible may allow you to do is to take advantage of a development that you didn't plan for. True. Right. And so you've got to have the the um, dexterity to be able to do that. But you're right. If you're constantly calling audibles then you really don't have a game. You don't have a process. You don't have a standard. Mm-mm. You're winning it. You, you um, know, I, I'm, I have the visual of the running quarterback who constantly calls an audible just to run. And if you know anything about football, you know, when that happens, everybody becomes a blocking uh, member of the team to block off the defense. The, the difficulty, if you ever seen the camera angle that follows the quarterback running behind someone who's blocking, the person who's doing the blocking on the offense doesn't know which direction you're going to run, left or right. Mm. So you're leaving your audible strategy up to chance. You don't know if the defender is going to break through left or right. 
And so you're trying to angle it as best as you can. But you also leave your blocking receiver, your blocking tight end, your blocking running back susceptible to not supporting you as best as they possibly could. Because their blocking can be the right thing or the wrong thing. And they don't know what your intention is, you know, whether you're going to go left or right. And so, therefore, they're left to just do whatever. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, you're still winging it. And I think in business, uh, that that creates an environment where people feel like they are the one-man band. They are the one running the business because I do, quote, all the work. Mm-hmm. It can feel that way. It can look that way just because you keep calling audibles and you have dysfunctional staff who haven't received direction or a play call. They don't know their lane assignments, the direction they're supposed to go, and they can feel completely inadequate, not a part of the thinking, not a part. They don't they may not feel like a contributing member. Meanwhile, you're just running, you know, all over the place and all you hear is the fanfare. Great job. You got that contract. You got that sale. And that's the fanfare. Meanwhile, your team is like, okay, I mean, I can continue to play this role, but tell me what to do. And and all they're hearing from their leader is, no, just continue to do what you do. I, I'll figure it out. That's not leadership. That's not even management. Right? No. There's a lot of leaders that do that, Galen. You know what I'm saying? And they run retail businesses like yours like that. Just haphazard. I had my wife and I the other day, uh, had an experience with a uh, a franchise owner of the franchise you own uh, in our area, and uh, they were at an event we were uh, attending, and they were selling the product, and of course we wanted some. But this is not the first time this particular vendor has shown up at an event. So, the, the, one of us are wrong. Either me and my wife are wrong or the franchise owner is wrong. And the reason is every time they show up, they only take cash. Huh. So my wife says, oh, y'all should think about bringing your little, you know, square register. My wife, quote, says they said to her, quote, oh, yeah, that's what we forgot at the store. Huh. <laughs> so, so you have businesses like just not thinking about. The full landscape of the game they're getting ready to play, coming to an event where you have parents with their kids, carrying cash is not normal for us anymore. anymore. No, and it's not. Fumbling around with a two year old trying to count out dollar bills to pay for that product is quite difficult versus just handing you a piece of plastic so we can exchange the product while I try to keep my kid from spreading, you know, the product all over the place and making a mess, right? And just no thought, no game plan, no vision. You're excluding a piece of the marketplace that can be more productive and lucrative for you. It's it's it, it, it just creates chaos in the business. So we ended up driving to the store, to that particular franchise store and getting something after the fact. But it was like an extra step we decided to take unnecessarily to get what we wanted. But we're not inclined to make that decision all the time. And, and I share that story because... You know, in our businesses, this is how our customers feel. This is how the market interacts with us. And when they and when we see this particular business owner coming, we're like, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Maybe we have cash, maybe we'll spend it with them, maybe we won't. Because, you know, you just don't feel, you know, like you're being serviced. And, and all that to say, man, you know, the role of the leader, as you've talked about, you know, strategizing, planning, and scenario development – is to think about every chance you have to sell and market your product in front of current and potential customers who will one day give you money in exchange for that product or service. And if you're not thoughtful about that, then everything's an audible and everything's a oops. That's what we forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you know, I <clears throat> had a, had a another friend business colleague tell me, uh, look, my job is to make doing business with me as easy as possible. Yes, man. I want to make it as easy as possible for you to give me, That's give right. me your money. That's right. Right. What, whatever it is I can do <laughs> to make it easy for you to sign that contract. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's what I'm trying to do. And, um, you know, and, and you know, your, your point about, 
for getting things back at the back at the shop. I mean, that happens, right? Boy, I tell you, it shouldn't happen a second time. Or third or fourth or fifth. Or sixth it it, it or really shouldn't, right? It, it can yeah. happen once. Yeah. You know, I, I went I went to an event. I went to a, to an event and I was just excited to get the event. It was a big, big opportunity. Uh and boy, I was I was just I was there. I had all the branding, I had all the logo. We we looked good and and there were some things I forgot. So I forgot uh to have uh, a, a signage a sign that I could change my offering as, as I sold out of particular flavors or particular items. I, I didn't think about that. I'd never done this before. Right. But the second time <laughs> I had my iPad so that I could make those changes on the fly and still be professional and still look the part and do the things I need to do. So um, yeah, I mean, mistakes happen. And when they happen, you need to take ownership of that. If you're the leader, if you're the business owner, you take ownership of, I didn't think through that. Man, it shouldn't happen a second time. Not, not the exact same thing, right? I shouldn't have the exact same problem two times in a row. Yeah. Yeah, I might have a different problem, <laughs> right? But not the exact same one. Yeah. I agree. You know, you know I... Uh, I, I uh, played basketball in my youth, and uh, played at the played high school, played college level as well. And uh, my, um, I was not a scorer. I was not a prolific scorer, and I was not incredibly tall. But my job was whoever the top scorer was on the other team. My job was to make sure that they scored something less than their average, right? Uh, and my whole approach to that was you might beat me, right? I'm not going to be the best athlete out there, but you're not going to beat me twice the exact same way, right? You're going to have to find some other way. There may be other ways for you to beat me, but you're not going to do it the exact same way two times in a row. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And I think that that, that needs to be the approach. Uh, that leaders need to have. Uh, and it, it requires courage to be able to say something like that, to be able to commit to something like that. Mm. And so uh, I keep coming back to this firm belief that um, one of the key attributes that leaders need to have is a degree of courage to say, I'm not going to get beat the same way twice. Yes. And we're not going to lose with the ball in your hand. Yeah. Right. It's just it's just not going to happen uh, because if we do, it's going to be my it's my responsibility to make sure that either you're capable of doing what we need to do or that I'm capable of stepping in at the last minute to save the day if I have to. Um, and even that is dangerous because there's a lot of learning that um, comes from failure. Uh, so, um, if I step in the last minute all the time to save you, then you don't, you don't get the learning and guess what? Now I'm the new account manager on XYZ business because the customer is going to constantly come back to me. So there's a balance there. So you have to play the long term versus the short term. But, uh, ultimately, uh, I keep coming back to this idea that every success and every failure begins and ends with leadership. And I need to be willing to own that. And that's a excellent way to end this <laughs> conversation. <laughs>